So nervous system, human nervous system, we can think like a computer. Okay. So that the nervous system has three parts: the spinal cord, the middle portion of the brain, upper portion of the brain. The spinal cord is common to human beings and reptilians and lizards and snakes and all those things. The middle part of the brain is com common to animals and human beings. The upper part of the BM brain, which is called neocortex and all, is a part of the human human brain. Okay. So how was the life as a lizard? Snake. <coughs> it is survival, sex, right? Sex and survival. Two yes. Survival was fight or flight. So this is the life of the reptilian beings. That is the life of a human being also. Survival and sex. Is there anything different than the reptilian life? You may have a nice way of surviving. You may live in a bungalow or a palace. Hmm? <coughs> and sex of course air conditioned room or uh, whatever is that but ultimately it is same survival and sex is the reptilian life now human beings have a higher brain also right which is logic thinking and all so most of the human beings use higher brain for the lower purpose <laughs> huh? you understand true higher brain is used for lower purpose okay so the middle part of the brain which is comes to animals there is some amount of emotion so like dogs and all they have affection their loyalty which is not there at the reptilian life some emotional life comes into picture when you come to middle part of the brain so many people live that life also middle part of the brain and the upper part of the brain is used for logic, analysis, creativity. So that's why that's what has human what is given what has given human beings the gift of science, technology, the poetry, right? So you can use the higher brain for the lower purpose or lower brain for the higher purpose. The lower brain in you is used for your body functionalities, autonomous nervous system and all those things. All right. So what life you are leading, please tell me, which part of the brain you are leaving? Most of the time it's middle. <laughs> middle. <laughs> this is a safe answer actually. <laughs> right. So what happens is human beings most of the time live in the lower part of the nervous system. The awareness is always at the lower part. <coughs> so this you can talk in modern language as a conscious mind, subconscious mind and unconscious mind. Okay. So unconscious mind has primal urges. What are the primal urges? The sex and survival. Nobody has to teach anybody about this. That comes by the child is born, it knows it has to take the food. These are primal urges. It has come as a part of the unconscious programming by the universe. Fear is there. Fear is also part of that. Fear of survival. Right? Nobody has teach you how to fear. Even the child will a child is afraid of afraid. Right? Fear, sex, right? And survival. And sleep. They are called Ahara, Nidra, Maithuna, Bhaya in Sanskrit. Ahara means food, Nidra means sleep, Bhaya means fear and Nithu Maithuna means sex. So any school teaches this? Hmm? No, nobody has to teach this. These are all primal urges. Is there a part of the all living being, not only human being. right? No human, no animals have to learn any of this. Only human beings may have, have to have a sex education. So 
they are more confused whereas other animal you see everything has four education is four things are primal that's unconscious programming okay then there's subconscious subconscious is based on your exp impressions got angry anger fear anger then uh, jealousy all those things are based on your experiences these are kama krodha mada matsara moha loba six emotional disturbance of human beings kama means desire krodha means anger kama krodha mada means uh, haughtiness matsara means jealousy moha means attachment loba means miseryness so these are part of the experience of human beings subconscious expression all these are considered as part of the lower brain mid to lower brain and you are conscious you are aware of this no you are conscious of this so this is called consciousness human being unconscious subconscious and conscious mind okay but then you are not aware is that you have a super conscious mind also which is actually upper part of the brain starting from atna chakra upper part of the brain nervous system it is not fully utilized in human being it is not fully evolved okay you have the infrastructure but it is not well uh, utilized it is said that human beings have evolved from monkeys from monkey to man is the theory of darwin do you agree with that hmm? you agree or you don't agree i agree i agree it's false actually it's wrong actually <laughs> human beings are not evolved from monkey to monkey has not evolved in human being human beings are monkeys only <laughs> without a tail <laughs> the mind keeps on shifting shifting jumping 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 <laughs> huh? only thing is monkeys you jump physically human being monkey human being mind it has been monkey as a monkey or mind as a monkey <laughs> right the evolution it darwin speaks of at a physical level the evolution which we speak of at a consciousness level this a consciousness level also evolution apply so has the evolution stopped with the monkey becoming a man then there's next level of evolution possible and that next level of evolution of which is found that it can happen through this center atna and this center called sahasra enlightenment now you got a right word sorry <laughs> <laughs> education has been proper <laughs> So, this is possible when you develop these centers, this center and this center. So, for developing that center, you need to preserve the energy, direct the energy to these centers. Meditation, contemplation, service, all those things will develop those centers. You become more and more aware. You start living in awareness. One day will come when whatever you do, you can't go to unawareness. That's the state of enlightenment. Kundalini is first stage, na? Ha, these are all stages. So first stage is to learn the word called enlightenment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that you have done already. <laughs> That's the A B C of life. <laughs> so any questions? So when you did the meditation, did you find uh, mind became silent? Yes. Hmm. Yes or no? Sometimes. Sometimes. Mind, mind. Did you feel the silence? The silence is the nature of existence. That's your own true self. So as you go into more and more awareness, you become that state. That state will be retained throughout the day. You operate from deep silence. When you operate from deep silence, you operate from God. <coughs> So how do you think when you ask a question, immediately answer comes to me? It doesn't come from the mind, lower mind. It comes from the higher mind, super conscious mind. It's connected mind. Understand? Right. So now, beyond super conscious mind, the subconscious. Sorry, I stopped it here. You stopped it there or continue? So the subconscious, unconscious, super conscious, conscious mind, right? Conscious, super conscious mind. your super conscious mind will give the truths of the universe okay so all uh, religious teachings what is called dharma karma moksha liberation 
enlightenment, all these things come from the superconscious mind. Okay. So now what I speak, these truths come from the superconscious mind. These are not conscious mind or subconscious mind. <coughs> Similar discoveries of science, many of them, like theory of relativity or quantum physics, many of them have come from superconscious mind. Even the scientists say that I, it, I got it. <coughs> It comes from the higher mind, superconscious mind. Okay, understand? So, so <coughs> when we are doing some creativity, mm. like uh, drawing or like singing or like pre uh, preparing websites and all, this all come from superconscious mind. The creativity come from uh, can come from unconscious mind. The creativity can come from subconscious mind. <coughs> creativity can come from conscious mind. Creativity can come from superconscious mind. We can't judge. We can judge. Those who know can judge. Those who have eyes, they can see. <laughs> hmm? What comes from the superconscious mind has a lot of beauty and subtleness, peace with it. A person who is realized, enlightened, makes a statue. Versus a person who has not realized makes a statue, there will be hell lot of a difference. A sculptor, let us say one sculptor makes a Shiva statue and another sculptor makes a Shiva statue. The person who has made a Shiva statue is an enlightened one, then the statue will have a, a beauty in that. Which is, you can't explain. Beauty, there is no formula, no? That girl is beautiful. Mm -hmm. How you can so explain a formula for that? <laughs> It's an inner experience. The person who is enlightened and he creates a poetry, there's a beauty in that. A subtle beauty. In there's a today, today the film industry is there, right? How many million films are million songs are there? Every every time they can have will compose a song. Right? But all these are coming from subconscious mind. Unconscious mind. Junk. <laughs> Is private public or private garbage you are putting public garbage, <laughs> making public garbage. Okay. Whereas there are poetry which has come from like Kanakadasa, Purandadasa, some saints, Upanishads are poetry. Okay, one of sentence is poetry. Veda Mantra is a poetry. Now this poetry is eternal in nature. It lasts long. All this garbage which, which comes out of human subconscious will be nowhere, it'll be, no, no time it will be forgotten. Okay. The teaching of Buddha, they are coming from superconscious mind. They last long. They will teach the simple same thing. Nobody will teach anything special. The truth, peace, love. But the words will have that power. What is correct about it? <laughs> hmm? What is correct? You are getting. I will give you an example, then you will get it. So, Vaishali comes to Rajeshwaranagar and some all everywhere garbage is there. She says, What? Oh, this place is garbage, full of garbage. So, even if you come 10 times and say 100 times, you say garbage, nothing will happen. Suppose one day Prime Minister come, decides to come to Rajeshwaranagar, <laughs> looks at the garbage, it doesn't say anything. Garbage, that's all. Next 10 years that place will be clean. <laughs> what is the difference? Huh? You also said same thing and Prime Minister also said same thing. Why? But he is a Prime Minister. <laughs> His words have the power. The words are same. Understand? How did the power come? The position. Correct? Same words, the truth and peace and love can come from the politician's mouth. <laughs> and same word, truth, peace and love can come from the hey, enlightened person's word, mouth. The words which come from enlightened person, that has the ability to transform people. When it comes to the mouth of the politician, people don't even care. The power to the word is given by the consciousness. Understand? So similarly, whatever action and work which is done by the Dnani, the power of consciousness is that. Understand? How many kings were there? How many politicians were there in India? You please tell me. 
Alexander the Great, Changiz Khan, all millions, thousands of people have come and gone. Ashoka. Can you find one, uh, one uh, fourth generation, fifth generation person of their family? Very rare. Somebody will find, and that guy will be uh, somebody, some his grandfather will be some, uh, or rather, grand grandfather will be a uh, powerful uh, empire, empire, and he'll be a begging on the street. So this is a blood relationship. Blood relationship. You want three, four generations, five generations dilute. Whereas the word of a Nani, enlightened one, will keep on growing. Buddha spoke words 2,500 years back. Krishna spoke words 5,000 years back. Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Only 726, 26 lokas. Roughly about 7,000 or 8,000 words. But at that 8,000 words what Krishna spoke in Bhagavad Gita will be lasting for 100,000 years. Right? What Buddha spoke, it became Tripitika. It will last for 10,000 years, 100,000 years. Understand? So that is the power of enlightenment. So Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, when he taught, he taught in simple stories, examples. When he taught, there were some hundred people or fifty people coming to his house. After he passed away, Vivekananda took these words. Then one century is over. Millions and millions of people listen to Ramakrishna Paramahs words. What happened? So as the time passes, it starts power starts growing, 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 growing. <coughs> All right? Whereas the physical power, the political power keeps on coming down, 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 down. Spiritual power keeps growing, 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 growing. Understand? So that's why a birthday of a Dhani is called as Vardhanti. There's no birthday celebration for a Dhani. Vardhanti means Vardhati keeps on increasing. It keeps on growing. So there is a, the celebration of a birthday with Nani. It's not a birthday celebration. There's nothing called birth for a Nani. There's no body, there's no mind, there's no intellect. Then what are they celebrating? There's something called celebration called Vardhanti. Vardhanti means keeps on increasing, growing. Vardhati. What grows is the body grows, is the mind grows. This teaching keeps on growing. Okay, the teaching of Adnani is eternal in nature. So it's same truth, same all Adnani's will discover same <coughs> truth, truths. Only thing is, it comes from different mouth and different context. So that teaching keeps on growing. That's why Adnani's birthday celebration is called Vardhanti. And when the Adnani passes away physically, the birthday celebration is called Jayanti. Jayanti means victory. Okay, so his his teaching sees his victory. He has conquered his, his own nature and his teaching what he has given will he is actually celebration of the victory of Nani. That's called Jayanti. You understand? So this keeps on growing. So enlightened beings teachings, the words, the action, everything has is same as any other person. But they are not saying. An unenlightened person's words and thoughts and actions causes disturbance in others. An enlightened person's words, thoughts and actions brings peace and love to, into the heart of even a stone. Understand? Words are same. The politician says peace, peace, peace. Okay, <laughs> nobody will get peace. They will get disturbed. <laughs> same way Nani doesn't, may not even say this peace. He just says, that's more than sufficient, peace will come. Understand? So we understood now? Any questions? 
the words the power of the words of gnani comes from the power of consciousness which comes directly from the super super consciousness now gnani is not even super consciousness gnani is beyond super consciousness that's called parabrahma a state of oneness with the supreme reality there is no thought there's no word no sound no music no dance <laughs> Any questions? So you came by taxi? Okay. Are you staying close by or so whatever? Yeah. She stays in electronic city. Huh. She in Mumbai. Mumbai. Okay. Stopped. Stopped. Save.